All right, we got some interesting hardware news out today. So specifically, we've got something on the Lenovo website, uh, which seems to be confirming some facts about some of the lower end NVIDIA cards that'll be coming out. We've got some tweeted Geekbench results, which uh, are giving us some information about the 3070 laptop version of the card. And we've got some uh, information about the uh, 11th gen processors from Intel, giving us some CPU Z benchmarks that we can dive into. And I wanna mention a quick follow-up on something I reported on recently, which was the temperatures and CPU usage issues in the Epic Games Launcher. Let's jump right in. All right, so as I reported, I don't know how many days ago, it was a few days ago, the Epic Game Launcher was using an awful lot of CPU and raising temperatures, especially on AMD CPUs, uh, and it really shouldn't when it's literally sitting there doing absolutely nothing. Well, uh, thanks to a bunch of people uh, raising a big fuss about that, Epic was uh, made aware of the situation and has a hot fix out now that they're saying it clean, oh, saying, claiming is not a full solution, but that things uh, should be improved. And I think they're looking to get a final, uh, better fix out soon. So I just wanted to give you guys an update on that, that this is better now, but not perfect. Okay, let's jump in to what we've learned about some of the lower end NVIDIA chips. So over at the Lenovo website, if you look at one of their desktop builds at the Lenovo Legion, it's giving some options, you know, for what kind of processors and graphics cards that you can slot in here. The interesting thing that we find is some of the information that up till now has just been leaks hasn't really been confirmed. So for one thing, we have a RTX 3050 listed as a four gigabyte graphics card. And so that again, has not been officially announced by Nvidia. We knew one would be coming, but um, now we're getting some information that is for sure gonna be a four gigabyte GDDR6 card. And we have the 3050 Ti listed as a six gigabyte GDDR6 card. And again, this is lining up with the leaks that we've seen coming. Also, we have the 3060 listed as a 12 gigabyte GDDR6 card. And again, um, these are lining up with leaks, but again, leaks and something being published on an actual website like Lenovo with actual specs on the build, uh, this is a uh, confirmation that the leaks that we've been seeing are probably accurate. Now, again, some of you guys jumping into this who haven't been following this might be wondering, wait, why is this 3060 being listed at 12 gigabytes, whereas things like the 3070 are at eight gigabytes, and then it's not listed as one of the options on this uh, computer system, but the 3060 uh, Ti also has eight gigabytes, right? So what's going on here? Why the 12 gigabytes? Well, we don't know for sure, but the one big possibility is that this is being lined up to compete with AMD's lower end chips, which are also rumored to be coming with 12 gigabytes. So I think this will be uh, Nvidia trying to line up where they're not gonna, um, you know, have that, it, it's bad publicity, right? It's bad marketing to have the other competitive card at the same price range have more VRAM, right? And we know that Nvidia, well again, in leaks, is <laughs> trying to come out with a 3080 Ti that has that 20 gigabytes of VRAM that'll line up better and look more impressive against the 16 gigabyte, 6800 and 6900 cards. Um, so I would expect to see just in the future uh, possible refreshes here. Like there's a lot of room for a 3070 Ti that would have more VRAM. Again, so Nvidia is known to release Ti or super variants of cards that are updated and a little bit better, a little bit faster. It wouldn't surprise me to see them also coming with more VRAM to line up uh, better against the AMD cards if people are concerned with the VRAM. And that's a really noticeable little thing in the marketing where, oh, one has more VRAM than the other, right? So anyway, I think that's what's going on with that 12 gigabyte choice here. Uh, again, this 3050 Ti is what was kind of originally, I think, rumored to have been a 3060 in the original plan, but they've dropped it to a 3050 Ti at six gigabytes, and that's making room for this 3060 at 12 gigabytes. Anyway, so that's confirmation of a lot of leaks we've seen. Now, um, as my subscribers are used to, and thank you guys, it's been really fun starting out the channel, thank you. Uh, for subscribing. If you're interested in PC tech gaming stuff, consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna link this article from Video Cards about this same topic, um, and they'll give you some follow-up information about the uh, specs that are rumored for these cards and all of that. 
Now, jumping over to GPU news, but more on the mobile side of things, we've got a tweet from Tum Appysack, or however you would <laughs> pronounce that. Uh, but the idea here is that this is a Geekbench result for a 3070 laptop GPU. Okay, well, which looks like it's at eight gigabytes, which lines up with the memory uh, on the desktop 3070, but the speeds are a bit lower. Um, somebody has a quick summary right here, which I think is fairly accurate, but we'll look at some um, actual articles as well here. Basically, it's about 83% the performance of a desktop 3070 and 88% of a 3060 Ti, uh, which would be very similar to the performance of a desktop 2080, 2080 Super, which is not bad at all. And I would pretty much agree with that analysis. That's a good summary of what that is. Now, jumping into a little bit more detail, uh, if we look over here at this video cards article on, on the subject, they're going to give us, so first of all, this is an open CL score. So it's not the full suite of benchmark tests as far as I've been able to tell. It looks like it just showed up in the open CL. Um, and then if we look at where this is lining up with what we think we're getting from these GPUs and how it goes against other ones, we would assume that this is the max Q variant, not the max P. Now, if you're not real familiar with the laptop stuff, I don't blame you. I'm not really either, but I've looked into this a bit. So basically the max P variant would have a higher power draw, whereas the max Q variant has a more limited power draw, as I understand it, which would probably reduce the frequencies and performance a bit here. So the one that we're seeing here is most likely the max Q. So the max P would probably have better performance, but we just haven't seen a leak of that result. So that's uh, what we can make of that leaked result. Again, the uh, power draws are most likely giving us the max P at 115 uh, to 150 watts, whereas the max Q would be drawing more like 80 to 90 watts. And again, you can see how this stacks up against, again, the um, rumored specifications that the people over here at Video Cards have put into a nice chart for us. So again, we'd be um, assuming that this leak is probably the max Q variant based on those um, uh, clock speeds. All right, jumping into the CPU side of things, we've got the 11900K tweeted out here with some CPU Z benchmark results, and we see both a single thread and a multi thread result. And then we had one Raichu, who has been a, a leaker on these types of things before, uh, we're releasing some um, more results here. These ones, if we jump into it, uh, are showing apparently a 11700K, and again, giving us a single thread result and a multi thread result, appears to be uh, blocking off the res end bits of the results. So we can see that it's like 670 something and 630 something here, you know, you know what I mean? Uh, but we can't see the entire result. Now, oops, uh, went back a little bit farther than I meant to here. But what can we make of this? So first of all, how does this compare to recent leaks you might have been seeing reported by other people? I don't think I've covered them of this 11th gen stuff. Well, a lot of those early 11th gen leaks that we've been seeing are from engineering samples. These appear to be the real deal full, uh, full CPU. So that is a little bit of a difference. Now let's jump over to this WCCF tech article about these leaks that I think has done a nice job of putting this into comparison because what do those scores actually mean, right? So first of all, if you're interested in the specs, a lot of people have covered this already, but these are the leaked specs that we'd expect to see from these GPUs. No, it's just CPUs, guys. I can speak CPUs. Um, and the biggest thing here is that these are pretty high power draws. And this is the 125 watt at the power level one. When it jumps up to power level two to hit its absolute maxes, it's rated at 250 watts on this thing, uh, which again probably explains why it's limited to eight core 16 thread instead of 10 core 20 thread, um, like the 10th gen processors offered at this tier. And that's probably allowing them to hit those higher boosts and they're, they're really pushing the power draw. So that's something to keep in mind when you're looking at this. Anyway, but how do these compare with other processors? So if we look at the single core, if we look at this tested on like a Ryzen 9 5950X, um, it is beating that against the 5800X, against the previous gen, so 10900K versus 11900K. We, uh, this was uh, getting us a 650, this is getting us a 695.4. This is a very solid jump 
in performance. So it looks like 19% faster than the uh, 10900K and 25% faster than the 10700K and 5 to 7% faster than the 5800X and the 5950X. So nice single core performance boost from this generation. Now, if we look at multi-core, it looks like it's getting absolutely shredded by a 5950X. And we would expect that, again, this is only a eight core processor versus the 5950. So they are cutting some of the multi-core to get that single core performance. But if you're looking at this in terms of a gaming GPU, uh, sorry, I keep saying GPU. If you're looking at this in terms of a gaming CPU, eight core 16 thread is plenty for gaming. And, the sing and that, um, performance per core, right? That single core performance is gonna be the really big deal in gaming. So I would say that how to interpret this. In terms of gaming, it looks like Intel is going to solidly reclaim the gaming crown for a while, at least until AMD then refreshes its lineup <laughs> and offerings once again. And as far as it's when we should be expecting to get this, we're probably not gonna be getting this for a few more months. Um, I think, uh, and they might have it down here at the end of the article, but I believe that we, yeah, it's supposedly coming around these dates uh, for these CPUs. And yeah, <laughs> so don't expect to be getting this right away. Now, what's all this stuff here? I don't want to report on this too much because this seems to be some thorough, uh, uh, thorough performance results, but they're from engineering samples, which seem to be clocked lower than the final results. So personally, I'm not too interested in what the engineering samples are getting us. Again, that's why I haven't been reporting on a lot of these things that have been posted over there at Chip Hell. So, but I will link this article in the description if you want to dive a little bit more into that. I'm more interested in what appears to be the final versions of the chips. So like I said, I think for a gaming chip, this looks impressive as long as you don't mind the massive power draw because AMD is definitely still going to have the efficiency win there. And in terms of multi-threading performance, so if you're wanting to do a whole bunch of other stuff like game streaming or you're you know, rendering a bunch of videos or, or some other processor demanding tasks on top of gaming, it's looking like this isn't going to take over that crown uh, by any means <laughs> compared to like a 5950X, uh, but looks like it will be a very solid choice as a gaming processor. Uh, when that's available. All right, I talked about the release dates, and here's a video cards article about the same topic, which once again, I will uh, post for you in the description to this video. All right, guys, it's one of my last days off on my break, so I'm gonna try to get some gaming done here, and uh, I'll uh, be monitoring the video throughout the day, see what you guys think about all this in the comments. Have an excellent day.